So as it turns out, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is really, really good. It's varied, witty, and it's brought some great new features to the series that make it feel like a really well fleshed out RPG. With so much to see and do though, it's easy to feel a bit lost during the opening few hours, so in order to help you find your feet as either Alexios or Cassandra, here are 13 things you need to know when starting Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> Before we dive in, I will say that I've kept the script spoiler free as far as the story goes, but please be aware that the footage may spoil a couple of side quests, or give some context clues as to what's going on in AC Odyssey that could be considered a bit spoilery. You have been warned. You're going straight to First up, you should pick your abilities carefully. One of the new things brought in for Assassin's Creed Odyssey are specific abilities for you to unlock and assign to certain buttons to use in combat. Where in Assassin's Creed Origins you'd fill up your adrenaline meter in order to unleash one supercharged attack, now your meter is broken up into chunks, with many of the unlockable abilities consuming one chunk of adrenaline per activation. As well as being loads of fun to use, these abilities really help you nudge Cassandra or Alexios toward a specific character build. For example, the Warrior Path offers an ability that lets you pretend to be a bull and dash past an enemy, dealing loads of damage along the way. Another lets you grab your enemy's shield and lob it into their face, getting rid of their defensive capabilities. There's one that lets you recover a chunk of your health in the midst of battle, which I find to be extremely useful, but others may feel is a little bit overpowered. There's also an ability allowing you to instantly coat your blades and arrows with poison for a brief period, dealing extra damage over time to your hapless foes. Investing in this path, as I have, lets you charge into battle with a number of different aces up your sleeve, improving your survivability and making larger groups of enemies more manageable. If you'd rather not meet every challenge head-on by rushing in, poisoning it and kicking it in the balls, mind you, you can always invest in the other paths. The Assassin skill tree lets you unlock an ancient version of the Flashbang, for instance, allowing you to disengage in a fight and return to sneaking about, and the Hunter pathway sees the return of the vaguely preposterous Remote Control Arrows from Origins. You'll unlock these abilities slowly as you level up, so you've got plenty of time to think about it, but it's worth taking a minute to look over the full range of options early on, so you can start planning exactly what shape your Mystheos is going to take. Don't sweat it too much though, if you decide you don't like what you've picked, you can always reset your skill points in the options menu. If I might be so bold as to make a suggestion though, the second thing to know when starting AC Odyssey is that you really ought to get the Spartan Kick. Now, I'll freely admit that when the Odyssey trailer came out showing Alexios punting a hapless individual off a cliff, my eyes rolled back so far in my head it took about 20 minutes for them to come back again. I enjoy Gerard Butler shouting his head off as much as the next person, but 300 came out 12 years ago. Isn't it about time we found some fresher references? Since playing Odyssey and trying out the infamous toe punt for myself, however, I have to admit I was completely wrong about this particular unlockable ability. For one thing, it's really useful. If you're fighting more than one enemy at once, it allows you to stagger them a bit and focus on attacking one while the other one is picking themselves up off the floor. It's also very handy if there's a convenient ledge to send them off, but we'll come back to that later. Most importantly, using the Spartan Kick is very, very funny. Please observe. I think it's mostly the sound effect, but it's also the way they properly fly off into the distance. Either way, I like it a lot. Doesn't really matter what you're kicking, whether it's a Spartan, an Athenian, a bear or a giant boar, I'm into it. And you owe it to yourself to at least give it a go. It really is one of the best ways to hurt people in all of ancient Greece. Talking of doing people harm in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the third thing you need to know is that you're going to hurt people no matter what you do. So just be ready for that. 
What do I mean by that? Well, Odyssey brings dialogue options to Assassin's Creed for the very first time. It also presents you with a number of choices in how different quests turn out. You can be merciful or vengeful, for instance. You can offer to help people for free or demand payment, or you can decide whether to continue trusting a character or just attack them outright. The system is pretty great, and it's provided a good deal of nuance to the experience of playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Just bear in mind, however, that the choices you make aren't always as straightforward as they might seem. I'll hold off on giving you specific examples, as that's a bit spoilery, but some of the choices you make in the game have far-reaching consequences, and when you feel like you're doing the right thing, you might be consigning the people in question to a worse fate, or one that's basically just a different flavour of horrible. You can't save everyone, is what I'm trying to say, so don't expect to romp through the entire game providing a happy ending for every single person you meet. They don't call it a Greek tragedy for nothing, after all, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey has plenty of woe to go around. There's also the simple truth that sometimes it's more satisfying to pick the darker path. Since we're talking about being on the wrong side of things, actually, it's also worth noting that you're going to be hunted for most of the game. Now that sounds a little alarming in isolation, so please allow me to explain. Since Odyssey takes place before the founding of the Assassin's Brotherhood, you aren't bound by such petty conventions as the Creed or, you know, being a decent person. Stealing and murdering civilians, in other words, is totally fine. These activities aren't without consequence, mind you. Doing naughty things like sinking merchant ships or offing innocent bystanders will increase your wanted level until somebody puts a bounty on your head at which point a mercenary will come looking for you. Not a problem, you might think. I'll just leave the civilians to their own devices and try not to become a full-blown pirate and then nobody will ever come after me. Guess again, friend. A number of your activities as you go about the place destabilising regions and then fighting in massive battles will draw heat, including killing the mercenaries already chasing you, so you can expect to have at least one bounty hunter on your tail for most of the game. Be ready for this as they have a habit of turning up at the worst possible moment and making an already difficult fight a lot harder. You can hunt down the mercenaries yourself if you like, you can lie low until things blow over, or you can go into the map and pay off all bounties to get them off your back entirely. This last option, while it may sound boring, is definitely worth considering before launching an assault on a difficult area like a fort. You're not going to be short on cash in this game, so it's well worth the investment. Speaking of assaulting forts, the next thing to know is that a height advantage makes a huge difference. It sounds obvious, but getting above your enemies and forcing them to come to you will give you a much better chance of survival than just charging in and taking them all on at once at ground level. For one thing, it gives you a better line of sight for using the bow. Secondly, and this does admittedly feel like a bit of a cheese, the guards tend to be a bit indecisive as soon as going up a ladder or climbing a building is involved. So, if you can bottleneck them by getting up high, then you'll most likely be dealing with a trickle of bad guys rather than one big cluster. Of course, raiding forts and killing enemies means one thing, and that thing is loot. The gear system from Assassin's Creed Origins makes its return for Odyssey, which is to say the next thing you need to know when starting out is that you're going to be spending a lot of time looking at this menu. Loot drops come thick and fast, and with a whole swathe of different weapons and bits of armour to pick up, you're going to be tinkering with your gear fairly often. Obviously it's important to pay attention to the numbers like DPS and armour rating, but picking the right gear for you is also about the different traits these items carry. Some give damage boosts to specific paths like Warrior or Hunter for example, while others might buff your poison damage stat, so if you make heavy use of that ability, you'll want to lean toward those items. You can also stick additional traits on gear of a certain quality level, and we'll come back to that in just a second. Currently my favourite weapon is the so-called Legendary Sword. Not because I have a particular love of swords, but because it gives a whopping 20% damage boost to the Spartan Kick. So, given my chosen playstyle, I'd be daft not to have it equipped. 
As I've continued to level up, mind you, I've picked up a whole bunch of weapons capable of doing more damage per second than my lovely kick-boosting sword, which leads us neatly into our next point, the blacksmith is your friend. As well as occupying the traditional role of weapons vendor, the blacksmith can also improve gear you already have. By handing over a bunch of resources and drachmi, your gear will be boosted to match your current level, meaning you don't have to get rid of a favoured weapon or piece of armour simply because you picked it up a few character levels ago. The blacksmith can also engrave your gear in order to give it additional traits. You can unlock new engravings as you go in order to broaden your options here, and handily, you can swap out your engravings further on down the line should you happen to unlock something you prefer. Since they show up on the map as just another icon in a frankly enormous game, it's easy to overlook the blacksmith. Don't. While we're on the topic of gear, let's take a moment to talk about fashion. As I said before, there's a lot of different gear on offer in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and lots of it looks very, very different. If you're used to dressing up your heroes in very fashion-forward, coordinated outfits, it is my solemn duty to inform you that you are going to struggle in the early game. There are ways to earn proper gear sets later on, I won't say exactly how as it's a bit spoilery, but at first you're going to have to slum it with a bunch of mismatched gear. Just focus on the stats and try not to worry about it too much, although I will admit there are certain helmets I refuse to wear because, well, I mean, that one's got a skull strapped to it. Anyway, to get back on topic, I mentioned earlier that the game map is basically massive. The whole game is, in fact. And there are so many areas to explore, locations to complete, and side quests to pick up that you might actually end up feeling overwhelmed. I certainly did at one point. As the game opened up, suddenly my quest list was as long as my arm, and it happened at the same time I realised just how much there was to explore and how many different systems to involve myself with. And I found myself thinking, when am I ever going to find the time to make meaningful progress through this game? Thankfully, there are a couple of ways you can avoid feeling daunted in the same way I did at first. For one thing, make sure you synchronise at the various points on the map whenever you're able. Traversing the beautifully rendered world of Odyssey is great, but with a game this size, you are going to need to use fast travel a fair amount, and not having many travel points unlocked will prove to be a major hindrance. You can also make things more manageable by planning your approach to each region. The game world is carved up into different territories, each with its own leader who you can choose to weaken and eventually kill, before then taking part in a big battle to decide who gets to control said area moving forward. Each area, of course, has its own collection of story and side quests, and the simple truth is that you don't have to do it all. With this being an open world game from Ubisoft, you may feel like you need to do absolutely everything in each area before moving on to the next one, but pacing yourself and coming back to areas later on is really important. It's better to leave a handful of forts unconquered and see more of the game than complete every single last activity in the first third of the game and then get totally burned out. That said, do give yourself the time to chew through a bunch of side quests every now and then. Some of them are short enough that you can mop up several in the space of an hour, but some are a bit different. What may seem like a fairly routine fetch quest, for example, may turn into something far deeper, and there's some good character stuff tucked away in a few side quests that initially seemed perfectly ordinary. Just two items left on our list of things you should know when starting out in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and the penultimate one involves ship-to-ship -ship combat. The With pirates thoroughly infesting the waters of the Greek world, you're going to be doing a fair amount of fighting at sea, whether by ramming other boats or filling them with arrows. If you take on a bunch of ships at once, you can quite easily find yourself taking loads of damage, which is where boarding other vessels comes in. If you board a ship and take out its crew, your ship gets repaired. Now, again, this is a bit of a cheese, but if you board a ship during a fight, any other vessels involved will stop attacking you and wait patiently for you to finish fighting on the enemy deck. The minute you return to the helm of your own ship, the battle resumes, only you've just healed yourself up. Boarding each enemy ship as soon as you can is a surefire way to keep yourself afloat if you're worried about getting sunk. Thank goodness for polite pirates! I guess. 
And finally, this last one isn't really a thing you absolutely have to know, but it's just nice to know, because sometimes if you're climbing down from a synchronisation point rather than doing a full-blown leap of faith, you'll do a little backflip with a tuck at the end, and it's really fun. There are lots of little details in Odyssey, and this is one of my favourites. The other, in case you've forgotten, is the Spartan Kick. And there you have it, 13 things you need to know when starting Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Hopefully, you'll find some of them useful. Keep your eyes peeled for more videos on Assassin's Creed very soon, because I think I'm going to be playing this one for quite a while. There are loads of videos for you to watch already from Eurogamer, in fact. Some of them should be on screen now, so do give one of those a click. Do like and subscribe for plenty more from Eurogamer, but mostly thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely day.